Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which, as the title suggests, we are going to take a look at UVs. And this is something that snuck in with the latest version in the Cinema 4D plugin that lets us now create multiple UV sets. And we are going to take a look how to use it. And not only that, we are also going to take a look how to use that same feature, which was there for a longer time in Blender Octane also. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's keep going. First of all, a small update on my PCB project. For those of you who are waiting for the PCB tutorial, it's still coming, but my project escalated a little bit since I didn't know how complicated it was to rebuild a Raspberry Pi, especially the backside of it. So a lot of traces, a lot of components, and I am happily working on it, but it will still need a little bit longer also since I am having a couple of chops right now, so I can't work full time on this. Okay, let's explain what this tutorial is about. So if you updated Octane to the latest version as of this tutorial, you might have come across this line here. And it says it added a second and third UV set to the UVW tag in Cinema 4D. And while this doesn't seem big to some, this can be a really handy feature and is often used in professional pipelines. So let's have a more in-depth look now. Welcome to Cinema 4D and Octane Land and also to our trusted syringe scene. I chose the scene because the syringe has a label on it with the numbers here. And while I did a labeling tutorial a while back, the link is in the upper right corner. This can be done in multiple ways and one rather professional way is to use a different UV set for it. The way I did this before was a little bit complicated, so if we scroll down to the syringe's main body, find the UV tag and shift double click on it, this opens the UV editor. And you can see I UV unwrapped this, I usually use Rhizom UV for that. So to place the label, let's have a look at our texture. So this is the label texture and its transform. I used transform values, so I placed the label on the UV island in a way that it's fitting my visual needs. Basically transforming the texture that we used inside of the UV spaces area for the label. And you can imagine this is rather tedious to find the right values for the texture to show up at the right place. An uh, even more tedious way to do that would be to use projections because we don't have 3D gizmos that show us how the projection is done and therefore this is a lot more guesswork still. In contrast to using crooked numbers, a much more straightforward way would be to use a second UV set. So you would duplicate your UV tag and then emphasize on the island that is connected to your labeling. So disregarding all the other UV sets that you don't need, you would transform and position your labeling UV set in a way that the texture is showing up at the correct place. And since you're using UVs, no transform needed. Of course, the only thing you have to do is tell the texture to use the second UV set. And this is what this tutorial is about. Alrighty, let's do hands on. For this session, I just assume you know how to UV unwrap stuff. If you want a tutorial how to UV unwrap using Rhizom UV, for example, this very same syringe, let me know in the comments down below. First of all, let's actually delete the transform tag since we established we don't need that anymore. Then duplicate the UV set by holding down control and dragging it to the side. Let's get rid of all the UV islands that we don't need. To do that, we go into polygon mode and then actually double click on the UV islands for the label. And this will select the connected UV islands so we can invert it by UI. And then we have all the others. Then what we can do is go to UV mesh and enable the UV transform and then just scale it down here to about a size of five. Let's actually make the render reflect what we did right now. To do this, we need to have a lesson on how the new Octane principle here is working. The material tag always is the starting point, and then we go from left to right and read out the UV tags. If there are no UV tags on the right, we loop back to the beginning and then start from there. So our first UV tag is still our old UV set, 
and the second one is the one we made the changes to. So if we change the position of those, then this is the first one and you can see now we don't have text on the arbitrary positions anymore because those are moved into spots where the texture is black. You might not believe it, but we are actually almost there. But if you lost your orientation, there's actually a little bit of guidance. So what you can do is move in the texture inside of the UV editor. So just drag and drop it in there from a folder. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see what we're doing. And now you can see the orientation and the positioning in regard to our UV island. Let's make it all come together by making this UV island active by double clicking on it again. Then go to UV mesh and resize commands and fit to UV canvas. So it actually extends to the borders. And you can see this is already looking rather nice. But if you paid attention in the beginning, this thing is orientated the wrong way. So what we need to do is go here and move it to the other side. So rotate it around 180 degrees. You can hold shift to snap it into position. The last thing we need to do to finish this is to put the first indicator to the bottom of the syringe. Otherwise the measurement will be off. So let's do this and it's really easy. We just need to pull down the UV island. So the upper edge here is in line with the first indicator, something like this. If you're doing this with other objects, there might be situations where you have to squeeze and stretch your UV island. So let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit. You can just hit the corner here and move it, but this then will proportionally scale everything, which we don't want. So by holding shift, you can then just move the one border not proportionally and therefore get the arrangement that you might be after. Okay, now that we are all set, let's actually talk Octane and UV Islands. So let's close this and go over what we did here next. Alrighty, to demonstrate a little bit better what we are doing, I multiplied a UV map with the label. So let's apply it to the syringe instead of the transparent material. So right now we are looking at our label UVs, which are of course good for our label, but bad for the rest of the UVs on the syringe. So for example, those on the stem are distorted and the rest of the UV sets are much too large because we scaled parts of our UVs down in the beginning. So just to repeat and avoid confusion, this is our syringe, UV set where the whole syringe is UV unwrapped and this is our label UV set. So if we put our syringe UV set in front of the material, it is applied to the material and this makes the UVs look good all around our syringe but destroys the label. Before we make the magic happen, let's tidy this up a little bit by moving the material tag as well as the syringe UVs to the left, which leaves us with the label UVs on the right. Again, just to repeat, as we learned before, we always start counting from the material tag and then we count to the right. So this is our first UV set and this is our second UV set. Okay, let's finally make the magic happen. And we are going to do that by adding a projection tag to our label. Since Octane always falls back to the first UV tag if there's no projection assigned. So let's do this and hit the projection button here and then we can actually see this projection is using the UVs and we have UV set 1 and the magic happens if we set this to UV set 2. We have the best of both worlds with the syringe UVs applied to the UV map and the label UVs applied to the label. So let's bring this back to our syringe by going to the syringe and assign it to the object here and then go inside of the material and do the same thing. Go to projection, go and set the UV set to two. And there we have it. So we could, for example, use a dirt map that utilizes the first undistorted UV map while we still have the right label with the second UV map. As a closing thought to this chapter, I said in the beginning that this is the more professional way to do that. The reason is that haggling around with transforms might be different from renderer to renderer while UVs are a universally accepted thing. So if we would export this syringe to for example Blender and then assign the right texture to the right UVs, 
then we get one to one the same position of the labeling than in our Cinema 4D scene right now. Speaking of Blender, let's have a quick look at what this process looks like in Blender Octane. Spoiler, it's rather simple. Welcome to Blender Octane and this is where we close the circle. So we have our syringe now for cycles for Blender Octane as well as for Cinema 4D. Small disclaimer about the Blender version I'm using. I have a slightly modified one. You can find the information about the version I'm using in the upper info strip of the video. But I modified a couple of things, especially the alt navigation. If you're interested in that, you can find more infos in the video Blender for Cinema 4D users, link in the upper right corner. Also, if you're interested in the syringe scene for Cinema 4D and both Blender Cycles and Blender Octane, of course, you can just subscribe to my Patreon and therefore get this scene and many others to try out and tinker around with. But now, let's get back to topic. This is actually the original syringe that I modeled in Blender and then unwrapped using Rysim. So if we going to our UV editor and then entering mesh mode, you can see those are the same UVs that we had in Cinema 4D. Bringing home the point that UVs are very universal and exchangeable between platforms. Before we do anything to the UVs, same as in Cinema 4D, we have to duplicate them. So let's go to the data section here, find the UV maps, then open that and then hit the plus. This will make a copy of your current UV map and call that maybe label. Here we go. Same as in Cinema 4D, let's go into UV poly mode. Let's select one of those and then hit L to select linked and then hit Control I to invert. Again, let's do the same thing as in Cinema 4D and scale this portion down. There's a neat trick. So you can see this is the 2D cursor here. So right now it would scale around the bounding box, so in the middle of it. But if we scale around the 2D cursor, it will shrink down there. So let's hit S and then 0.05, so make it really small. And you can see now it's in the corner down here. Let's select our label UVs again. Also, if you want to do the same and bring an image in here, you can choose it from here. So we can go with this one here and therefore get the right orientation, same as in Cinema 4D. I didn't find a fit to canvas in Blender, so we need to go for a multiple step process here. If you know a one click solution, please let me know down in the comments below. To get there is go to the UV setup and constrain to image bounce. This keeps our islands within the UV space and then grab it and move it to the lower left. Since we are still in 2D cursor mode, we can scale and then scale it up a little bit and then scale again. So now the scale isn't moving anymore unless we restrict it to the X axis and then move it to the right. Almost there again. So we need to rotate our canvas if you remember from before. Let's do this by unticking the constraint to bounce and then also get rid of the cursor mode because we want to rotate it around the middle of the object Then hit R 180 and here we are. And as a last action, we need to align the beginning of the scale to the beginning of the syringe by moving down the canvas. You can do it two ways. So either by grabbing it and then constraining it to the Y axis and then moving it down this way. If you want to have gizmos, you can find them here. So you're a little bit closer to the world of Cinema 4D with your movement gizmo. And there you are, you're all done. So let's get out of mesh mode here. And let's go back and have a look at our texture because you might have wondered why we are seeing the right thing to begin with. The simple reason is that I left the projection in and left it to the UV set two. So if I go and set it to UV set one, then we have the same thing as we had in the beginning of our Cinema 4D operation. As you might know, Blender other than Cinema 4D doesn't have any tags on materials or UVs. This makes this process a lot more streamlined as it just counts down the UV sets from top to bottom. And that is basically it. The only thing that might be worth mentioning is that Octane on its most can support three UV sets. If you have more than this, this will not be supported through Octane. And this is already it. I hope you figured something out, you learned something or at least had a good time listening to me. I also noticed that this was the only tutorial where I never once changed the perspective or moved the camera. 
Again, I will update my Patreon with the UV scene files if you're interested in those. Speaking of which, let's thank those people who made this video possible, my patrons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Just a Freakin, and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers. Alessio De Vecchi, Alihan Gekkefa, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Graham Bagnell, Harish Pavaskar, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Ludger, Muratan Axos, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quok an Dang, Random Capybara, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, Shamos Johnson, Shiro 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. Welcome to the checkered finish line. This was a surprisingly short one, especially if you think about it included two different software packages. Again, thank you for staying to the very end, for sticking with me all that time. Not a lot to say again, just the usual. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I hope you have a good rest of the weekend, a fantastic start into next week, and a fantastic week on top. Let's post a checkered flag in the comments to symbolize UVs, because the UV maps are always checkered for some reason, and also you made it to the finish line. Again, I wish you the best of times and happy labeling. Bye.